Hello Gorilla users! In this video I want to introduce you to participant status, what different statuses mean, how you can manipulate them when needed, and what does this mean for your tokens. So in your experiment you've got different tabs, design with your experiment tree, recruitment tab where you set up the recruitment target, recruitment policy, time limit for your experiment, and requirements. Participants tab, where you can see participants' progress. And data tab, where you can download your experiment data that you collected. So in participants tab, you can see a column status. And you can see different colorful statuses. So a live status of participants means that participants are still taking part in your experiment. So they are still live, they have not reached the finish node of your experiment. So in design tab, in experiment tree, you've got a start node, you've got a bunch of different nodes, and at the end you've got a finish node. So when the participant enters your study and reaches the start node, they become a live participant. And when they finish, and reach the finish node, they've completed your experiment and their status will change from live to complete. We also have statuses such as rejected participants, activated participants, and I will explain them in this video. So you can see participants' progress from this column, view progress. So for example, for completed participant, as I just showed you in experiment tree, you can see that they started with a start node and they reached a finish node. So their data is stored and ready for you to download from your data tab. While live participants, because they are still live, you can see that they started with the start node, they reached the first task and they got stuck there. They probably drop out or they still doing it. For example, for this live participant, you can see that they went much further. So they went for the first task, they got to the checkpoint, which checks how far they went, and they got to the second task, and they got stuck on the second task. So checkpoints are really useful where you want, when you want to look at the participant status. So you can add them by going to edit, add a new node, and you've got a checkpoint node just here to help you track participants' progress through the tree. You can name your new checkpoint and add it here. And they will look like this, they will be gray. So looking at participant progress can help you make a decision what to do with these live participants, because some live participants take longer than reasonable to make your experiments or they dropped out but they still occupy your tokens because when participants reach the start node they reserve a token and this token is held until they complete their experiment and become a complete participant or until you reject them or include them. So you can reject Partic live participants and include live participants, but you cannot do the same for the complete participants because they are already completed your experiment, they consumed the token, you paid for them, you have data generated for them. So when you go to actions, for complete participants, you see that reject and include are not available. You can delete complete participants. However, I want to give you a huge warning here because deleting your partic the participants is a permanent action that will complete your delete your data and you might lose valuable data so be very careful whether you want to delete participant or not this should only be used when you want to comply with your ethics so for example if in your ethical application you said that you will delete the data from participants that withdraw or that you will delete it after a certain amount of time then you can use this option or if you're using uh, your experiment for piloting and then you want to delete them, you can do that as well. However, remember that 
Deleting participants does not bring back your tokens. The tokens have already been consumed. You already paid for these participants and you got the data for them. Therefore, your tokens cannot be reclaimed. So be very careful with the delete options. So you can manipulate participant status for live participants. So you go to actions and you have an option to reject participants. Reject participants or include participants. When you include participant, like I did with this one here, you will see a green tick here. So for example, this participant showed that they went through task one, they haven't finished task two, but I am interested in this data from task one. I want to keep it. So I want to include this participant in my data. But remember that including participant is a permanent action and it will consume your token. It says here, it will include one extra participant in your experiment. And when you include participants, you consume tokens. So you pay for them. And this cannot be undone later by rejecting or whatever. So when you confirm, you will have a green tick next to this like that. So you can include live participants and you can also include participants that have been previously rejected. So I will show you how you can reject participants. So there are three ways in which you can reject participants. First, you can reject them by setting up a reject node in your design tree. So you go to new nodes, you choose reject from the bottom, and it says that all participants reaching a reject node will be marked as rejected. They can stop there or you can redirect them to a URL of your choice. So if you choose that, you can fill in all the settings. And when participants reach the reject node, they will be rejected. So they will not consume your token. The token that they were holding as a live participant will go back to your tokens and it can be reused for another participant later. So you might want to reject them with reject node early on. For example, if they do not uh, fit into your experiment requirements regarding the demographics, or any other reasons. You can also reject participants through setting a time limit from your recruitment tab. So here you will set a time limit for your experiment, hours, minutes, it's up to you. So it, it will be dependent on the nature of your study. Um, however, we want to warn you that you give enough time for participants to complete your study because otherwise you can you can lose a valuable data. So for example, if you think that your part, that your study might take about an hour, give people at least three times as long to uh, to complete your experiment. So give them, for example, three hours to complete. However, this is entirely your decision. It depends on your the nature of your experiment, and you're the one who will set up the limit. When you set up the time limit the participants will still be able to finish the task they were currently doing, but they will be later rejected and it will show as a rejected with time limit in your participant status. And this will again bring your token that they were current, that they were temporarily occupying back to your tokens and it can be, the token can be reused for another person. Lastly, participants can be rejected manually. So from the participant tab, so you go to actions, you go to reject, and you will be warned whether you want to manually reject the participant. And it says that this will bring back your token. It will not count towards your experiment um, target and it will not count towards your tokens. And when you're happy, you can confirm. And when you confirm, you will see a status rejected manual next to these participants. So as I explained, you can later include the rejected participants if you decide that you want to include the data in your analysis. You can do it by going to actions. And so I'll, I'll show you the example. So if I reject this live participant and I confirm, I, it shows reject manual. And then if I go to actions and I include them and I confirm, and this will again, use one of my tokens, so I'll pay for them. I confirm and I can see in the 
uh, included column a tick next to it saying these have been included. And you can monitor all of that in your recruitment page. You can see how many live included participants you have, how many rejected participants you have, and yeah, and what sort of way you rejected them with. So that's how you include and reject participants. And now to wrap up, when are your tokens consumed? So your tokens are consumed your tokens are reserved when participant enters the study, when they reach the start node, they reserve a token, and the token is consumed when they reach the finish node. And they marked as complete. So complete participants consume your tokens, but also all the other participants that you use the data for complete uh, consume your token. So live participants that you included consume your tokens, rejected participants that you included also consume your tokens. Only those participants who have been rejected either by reject node from design or time limit from recruitment or manually rejected by you from participants tab, only these participants do not consume your tokens and your tokens are brought back into your tokens and can be reused until unless you manually include them, as I showed you here. When you manually include participants, they will consume your tokens. And you can find more information about this and written documentation about everything I showed you today on our How to Participants guide. So if you go to support page, you can either access our How to Participant guide from how to experiment participants tab, or from here, launching your study, how to participant. When you click on that, you will see a detailed guide on what do different participant st statuses mean, how to look at participant progress, information about checkpoints, very useful to, seeing, to see the progress of participants, how and when you can change participant status, how you can reject participants. You will find all the details about each method, about reject node, about time limit, about partici rejecting participants manually with links to how to set each of these and some useful screenshots of what I showed you today. You will find a guide to including participants, including live participants, and including previously rejected participants. And you will find participant tokens guide in here, telling you all about tokens, when the tokens are consumed, when are they not consumed, as well as links to further information about tokens pricing, lab subscriptions, etc. from our pricing FAQ. I hope you enjoyed this video and this guide, and I wish you happy experimenting.